Hello folks, not a typical video from me, but I want to talk about a new energy tariff that's been launched by Octopus. It's called Octopus Power Pack, and it's the first that I'm aware of vehicle to grid tariff. If you're not aware of vehicle to grid, or you've heard or seen V2G, but not sure what it really means, basically you keep your car plugged in to your wall box at home, and it allows the network to basically draw power from your car at peak times, so sort of reducing strain on the grid, and at low demand times, pushes the power back in. Now this Octopus tariff lets you charge your car at home completely free, as long as you meet these certain conditions, which I'm gonna go through in a sec, and it's very restrictive at the moment. So most of you watching this video are not gonna be able to use this, I have to say, uh, but one or two of you will, and you might feel the benefit from it. So to qualify for this tariff, you'll need to agree to keep your car plugged into your wall box at home for at least 170 hours per month. Don't worry, by the way, you can set a minimum charge level that you're happy for your car to go to. So say, for example, you never want them to leave you with less than 50% of your battery. You are able to set that by the looks of things. Um, certainly from, from what I've seen. Octopus claims that if you're on their sort of standard tariff, this could save you £1,360 a year if you do 10,000 miles a year in your EV. And if you're on their best sort of EV tariff, which I think is Octopus Intelligent at the moment, Intelligent Go, uh, 172 quid a year, this is going to save you. Obviously, it's much cheaper using Intelligent Go than it is using standard tariff at standard rates. So you might be listening to that thinking, well, this sounds brilliant. Where do I sign? Um, but it's a bit more restrictive than that. At the moment, it's only compatible with one charger, and that's the Wallbox Quasar 1 V2G charger. Uh, it's only compatible with Chademo cars, and they currently just list the Nissan Leaf, um, actually one's a van, it's the Nissan EV200 van, and the Mitsubishi Outlander plug-in hybrid. Um, you also have to have a smart meter, and you have to have permission from your network operator to be pushing power back into the grid as well as withdrawing it. So not too many people are gonna be able to do it at the moment, but I think this is an incredibly good sign. Uh, and shows once again that Octopus seem to be well ahead of the curve when it comes to all things EV, really. Um, I've certainly been with Octopus for quite some time now and, and moved on to the Intelligent Go tariff, and I think it's brilliant. Um, I will put my link, by the way, in the video description and pin it as the top comment, because if you've got an EV, I strongly suggest you make the switch. Um, if you use that link, you get 50 quid credited to your account and I get 50 quid credited to my account. And that makes two happy people. My one sort of worry with vehicle to grid really is how it's going to affect the battery life. Um, I have to assume that it will be okay because it's going to do everything slowly. You've only got a seven kilowatt wall box at the end of the day. So it's not like you're going to be supercharging the car when it gives you it back. Um, but I don't know if there's been any research into sort of how well batteries cope with vehicle to load or anything like that. I'd be really interested to see it. So if anyone does know of any of that, please point me in the right direction. But that's my one sort of question with all this. Otherwise, if you've got a Nissan Leaf at home and you're happy having it plugged in for six, seven, eight hours a day, maybe this is a great way to save yourself a few quid. Not a typical video for me, but uh, I thought one or two of you might find it interesting. So please give it a thumbs up, please subscribe to the channel and please come back for more. I'll catch you on the next one.